Hello everyone, this is Lorenzo from Miteco. We prepared a new version of the Miteco interface, and while some of you may have already tested it in the Yokohama meeting where it was available as a beta, we thought it might be a good idea to record a new tutorial from scratch to provide some guidance. In fact, while you'll probably find it easy enough to navigate, especially if you're already accustomed to the previous version, there are a few noticeable changes that it's good to be aware of. Notice that this presentation only covers attending meetings as a regular participant, so if you are a chair, after watching this one, you'll also want to refer to a different tutorial that we've made available. So, without further ado... If you're interested in joining a specific ITF meeting session, all you need to do is visit the agenda, where you will find them divided by working group session, and specifically clicking the purple webcam icon will bring you to the ITECO interface. To join any session, you'll first of all need to make sure that you're actually registered to the ITF meeting, which is a prerequisite for joining. Once you've done that, you'll be able to join a session by logging in via the data tracker. So all you'll need to do is basically insert your data tracker credentials in order to be recognized by the platform and join. In this case, I'm just using the credentials of a fake participant that we typically use for testing. And as soon as we're done, by clicking signing in, an authentication process will kick in and will eventually be added to the room. And as soon as we do, the first thing we'll see is a pre-flight dialog, which is where we'll be able to pick which devices to use in case we need to speak to the room later on. And so first of all, we'll need to grant access to the to our camera and microphone, and from there we'll be able to choose specifically which device we are interested in using. So for instance, in this case, I have two different webcams available, and the pre-flight allows me to have a preview of how they would look like if I chose one rather than the other. But most importantly, I also have a view of the audio capture levels, and these are particularly important because you'll want to make sure that your microphone is actually working. And as soon as we're done with that, we are basically ready, knowing that we are muted by default. The new Miteco interface is organized a bit differently from the previous version that you may be accustomed to. Specifically, it is divided in three micro areas, where we have a center area where the main content is typically presented, which will include video and slides, for instance, a left sidebar which can present some kind of content, and a right sidebar which can present a different kind of content, in both cases in a very dynamic way. And while this bar on top will control these macro areas that we just anticipated, the lower bar will instead provide you additional controls related to your audio and video participation, which we'll get back to in a second. For the moment, let's get back to that top bar instead, and specifically focusing on the left area. And the first icon that we see is related to the chat, and this is where the Zulip ITF chat can be used and interacted with. And as you can see, you can specify, for instance, which topic to use, which will by default will be related to the ITF meeting, while instead all incoming messages related to any topic will be consumed. And this is also where we can interact with the public chat, for instance, writing a message that everybody can read. And if we want, we can also add some emoticon to make this more dynamic and interactive. And while this chat view is by default integrated in the Miteco interface, you can, just as in the previous Miteco version, detach it into a separate window if you so prefer. The left area of the interface is also where you will be able to interact with the show events functionality, which we'll cover later on in this tutorial, and also where you can have a bird's view of other available rooms, so other available sessions that are happening at the same time as this one, so that you can jump from one to the other quite quickly. The right area of the interface includes some additional functionality, starting from transcriptions, which we'll, again we'll get back to in a minute, also an overview of the available meeting materials associated to this meeting session, and most importantly, the list of available participants. In this case, for instance, we can see that there is a chair connected, which will be in the chairs section, and in the participants list we'll see all the other participants in the room which we'll also be able to identify by type, because, for instance, in this case, Tobia is connected using a separate icon, which tells us he's using the on-site tool rather than the full Miteco interface. And this finally brings us to the center area of the UI, where we can see some additional information, like the fact that this meeting is recorded, for instance, but it is also where the main content will be presented, included note-taking, which is something that we'll see in a minute, but also, and most importantly, content contributing by other participants, like in this case, for instance, the video and audio from, from the chair, but this may also be a screen being shared later on. And as you can see, the, the areas can cooperate together and the layout will adapt automatically depending on which one you enable.
And finally, one last thing we're talking about are private messages. And specifically, if you select one of the participants in the participants list, you, by clicking on the balloon icon, you'll be able to start a private chat with them. In this case, for instance, I'll start sending a message to the chair asking when my turn to speak is. And this message will be sent just to the chair. It will not be a public message as we've seen before. And any private message sent back within the context of the same conversation will appear in that same tab as well. Within the context of any session, you'll receive multiple media streams from other participants, ranging from, for instance, presentations to video streams. But audio is, of course, also equally important, and the UI will notify about who is actually a current speaker in the room in case they are remote. And the same information is also rendered around the boxes of those speakers, because, for instance, in this case, you can see how this speaker has a highlighted box because they are currently speaking. In case you want to change the volume of the incoming audio stream, you can use this button in the lower bar to tweak it. All the video and slide content in the center area can be rearranged in different layouts. And for instance, for each of the available content, you can choose which one should be pinned and displayed larger than the others. In this case, for instance, we are pinning video to be displayed larger than the slides, or we can go back to pinning slides instead. Or maybe we may want not to pin any specific content at all and just display all of them at the same size. We can put any of the content in full screen and go back to the main layout instead at any time. And if we need to save bandwidth, each of the individual video streams can also be paused at any time, which means that we are actually unsubscribing from them and not receiving any video content while still receiving the audio from those participants instead. And of course, whenever we want, we can restore the video and show it back. And as anticipated, the right area includes a section for transcriptions. And if you open this section and click on Open Transcription, this is where a live transcription of the current audio will be displayed. In this case, there is no live transcription happening for this specific session, but this is where the actual content will be displayed when available. And you'll be able to choose the size of the transcription in order to make it easier to read. And you'll also be able to detach this view into a separate window if you prefer so. There may be times during a session where we'll be expected to contribute something to the room in terms, for instance, of audio and video. And these are exactly the controls that are available in the lower bar. So you'll see that there are buttons to unmute your audio and video and also share screen, which we'll get back to in a second. And while audio and video are unmoderated, it's actually a good idea to, first of all, join the queue in order to notify the chair that you are interested in speaking, for instance, to make a question. And as soon as the chair gives us the green light, we'll be able to start sending video and audio as well in order to start interacting with the room. And to release the floor, all we need to do is press those same icons in order to stop sending audio and video to the room. And of course, don't forget to also leave the queue as part of the process. If you need to make a presentation within a session, there are a couple of different ways to do that. One of them is, of course, sharing your screen, but that's not the recommended way to do that. We actually recommend using the, the shared slides functionality, which will basically allow you to pick a preloaded set of slides and control them uh, on your own instead. First of all, you'll need to ask permission to the chair to actually do that. And as soon as the chair grants you the floor, you'll be presented with a list of available decks that you'll be able to pick for your own presentation. And you'll be able to also have a quick preview of how the slides look like in order to make sure that those are actually the slides that you're interested in presenting. Let's go with this slide deck. And now the interface will change so that we have an overview of which slides are available. So we can see that there are eight different slides in this deck. We can preview each of them and we can also advance them one at a time. So for instance, to go from slide two to three to four and so on and so forth. And we can also jump to any specific slide we want at any given time. And this will allow us to control the presentation and its flow. And as soon as we're done, we can either choose to close the deck or maybe if we have to make another presentation right after this one, we can also choose to change the deck. And so while we still hold the floor, we can choose a different document to present. So using the same interface we've seen before. We change the deck, the numbers over there change, and so we can now control this different deck instead of the previous one. And once we are confident that we have no other slides to go through, we can use the close the deck button to finally close this presentation and most importantly release the floor as well. 
In case for any reason you cannot make use of the preloaded slides functionality to share your content, you can also decide to share your screen. And this also needs to go through the approval of a chair. So clicking that button will actually ask the chair for permission to share your screen. And as soon as that permission is granted, we're first of all asked if we really want to share our screen. And once we confirm that, we're presented with a dialogue where we can actually choose which kind of content we want to share, which will change depending on the browser that you're using. And most importantly, depending on the browser, you may have to actually configure your operating system in order to allow that. In this case, let's share a simple application, for instance, a PDF viewer that I have open on my laptop, from where I can then advance by the presentations using screen sharing instead rather than the preloaded functionality that we've seen before. And again, once we're done with the screen sharing, we can just press that button again to release the floor for good. If at any time you're interested in checking the meeting materials for the working group session you're following, just click the related button in the top bar and it will open in the right area of the interface from where you'll have a look at the agenda that is currently available as well as all the slides that are currently available in the meeting material page as well. If for any reason there is a desync between the content displayed here and the one available on the data tracker, just click the refresh documents button and it will force a refresh of the content so that it is pulled again. If the chairs start a new show event session to get the feel of the room about any specific question, we'll be notified accordingly so that we can go there and participate. And specifically, the show events will appear on the left side of the Imiteco interface, from where, first of all, we'll be able to check what the question is and then provide our own answer to that. And in the meanwhile, of course, other participants will do the same, which means that in real time we'll be able to see how the question is progressing. In this case, we decide that we do like the Miteco interface and so we contribute our own vote to the show events. Eventually, the chairs will close the session and will be presented with the final results. This section is also where we'll be able to double check the archived results for previous show events that happened during the context of the same session we're attending. If you need to take any notes during the session, you can take advantage of the shared note-taking tool functionality, which in the Miteco interface is in the middle area. Any notes that you take in this tool will not be visible just to you, but will actually be shared with all the other participants that open the same note tool within the same session. Most importantly, whatever you write here is also saved, which makes it very useful when it comes to actually reviewing a session after it's ended. And that's all. I hope this was a clear enough overview of how the new UI works, and most importantly, what you can do with it. We've worked a lot on your feedback, so we are definitely excited to see it used for the next meeting. For more information on the features available in the Remote Participation Tool, please refer to the documentation as well, which is available on the meeting website. Enjoy your meeting.